Holy Wire mod. Holy Wire mod here, and this is going to be the tutorial 13B in the Lewis series, where we're going to continue with VGUI elements, and we're going to be covering panels, buttons, and parenting. All right, so let's start by going to the client side real quick. And before we start getting into panels, I'd like to show you how to parent a button to the frame so you understand that method. So actually, I'm going to start by commenting this out, and we'll make a button. So we go local, just like we did with frame in the last tutorial. We go local, we'll set it to button, we'll say VGUI, create. And from the list of VGUI elements, we have one called button, which is a button. I know, very descriptive description. And then we'll put that here, so we put the button. And then we're going to parent it with this command. Right here, we're going to parent it to frame. So what parenting does is whenever this frame moves, um, this button moves. Whenever this frame is open, the button comes with it. Whenever the frame is closed, the button also disappears. So whatever happens to the parent also happens to the child. Okay. You can also do that or parent it by saying set parent like this. And we can put frame in here. does the exact same thing as this. So we're not going to really worry about that. I'm going to use the first method. So the first thing you'd want to do then is to set the text and we'll say close. So we'll make this a close button, which means I'm going to be setting this to false when we say show close button, since we won't need it anymore. Then I will say set position. Now in order to get the position, uh, yes, you can just take these values directly, but what if you have something like, you know, screen width instead, or screen width like this instead of a number, well, then at this point it becomes very useful to do this method, which is to say local x and y is equal to frame get size, and that will give you the width and stored in this value x and the height of the frame and stored in this value y. So these are now 1000 and 720. So when we set the position of the button, we also have to consider the size of the button, if you remember. So before doing that, we will set the size, and we'll make this button 50 width and a height of 30. So now we're going to say x minus 50, which is going to take 1,000 minus 50, and set the position there. And the height, we're going to set to 0, which essentially is going to set this button in the top left-hand corner of the menu, where the x button was. Okay, so now, since we have the position, size, and text set, we have to make this button do something. And to do so, we use do click. So we'll set it equal to function. And we'll end that here and say frame close. Whenever we click the button, the frame will close. So let's go in game and we'll see what happens. All right, so we're now in game. I'm about to press the F4. And as you can see, the window now comes up. And when I press the button, it closes. So everything works good. So now let's take a look and how to actually do the same exact thing, except we're going to do it with panels instead. And I'll show you why I like panels more. So in order to create a panel, the best way, in my opinion, to do it is to go into your game mode folder where all your files are and create a new folder called BGUI. And then in this folder, we are going to be creating a new text document. And we're going to call it menu underscore main dot Lua. Okay. Say yes to that. And I'm going to open it here. Now, in order to uh, create a panel first, you need to define a table. So we're going to define this table here. We're going to call it local panel. And the first value that you'd like in this table is called init. And that has a function which references self, which is the panel itself, OK? So in retrospect, it's like referencing frame. So you're just calling it self, all right? So the things that you can do are kind of similar to frame. However, you can't do like all this stuff. Because remember, just as frame has its own set of attributes, which are highlighted, button has its own set of commands and attributes as well. And so does panel. 
So one of the things frame and panel share is set size. So we'll set it to the same size as the other frame. And we can also set position or center. And also when creating this frame, we want it to initially be visible. Okay, so we're gonna put that to true. And also for those who would like to see the make pop-up version, I'm going to use make pop-up as well. But the difference between a panel and a frame here is a frame does not by default have the close button as shown here. So we're gonna to have to take this close button and put it right here. All right, so I do that. And instead of saying frame that we're parenting or parenting to, we're going to put self, we're going to get self size, and we are going to, instead of closing self, we will set visible to false. Okay. All right, so we have everything set up to where um, the init is done. However, there is now another part of this table, because remember, we're creating a table. And that one is called paint. And that's going to equal this function, which is referencing self, the panel, the width of the panel, and the height of the panel, which is similar to saying x and y, since we already defined it here. But for now, uh, we're just going to use width and height, because that's standard. So here, we're going to be using the draw library. So let's say a rounded box. This time I'm going to make a difference. So you remember you got your 0, 0, 0 for your position and your uh, how rounded you want the corners to be. So rounded and position right here. And then your width and height right here. And also a color. And this time I'm going to make it like a dark black with a transparency of about 150. Now I'm going to combine the draw library with the surface library. And I'm going to make a border. To do that, first we need to set the color, if you recall. And then, I'm going to say draw outlined rect. So I'm going to set the width or the starting position to 2, the starting height to 2. So that's going to push the rectangle down 2 pixels on both the width and the height. And to compensate, we're going to take the width of the panel itself, subtract 4. Now normally remember if we had these values as 0, you'd be subtracting 2 instead of 4. So that's to account for those 2, is why we put 4. All right, And then we do the same thing for the height. And other than that, the last thing we need to do is actually register the panel. Okay, so we're going to say VGUI register and we're going to call this panel menu underscore main and that table the second argument is in reference to the table that you're going to be using for this registered VGUI okay simple enough right all right so now let's go into client and in it because we have to take this file and we have to add it so that the client actually downloads it Right, so in order to do that, you go so add CS. Oh, that's a capital S there, little file, and we are going to say VGUI slash menu underscore main dot Lua. All right, and also very similarly, going to be going to client, and you have to include the file on the client side. Okay, so you include, and we'll put that right there. Just copy and paste, make it quicker. And for this portion right here, I'm just going to get rid of everything. So now when we press F4, we need a method to create this panel. Just like we created the frame and the button, we need to create the panel with the VGUI. So first we're going to do a conditional check. Does, we'll call it a main menu like this, does main menu actually exist? If it does not, then we want to create it. So we'll say main menu equals create, And here we're going to be referencing or using 
this registered name so menu underscore main and that's going to get it to create this entire panel okay so we'll do that menu underscore main and then we'll say main menu set visible and we'll put it to false when we create it because remember when it is created it's getting set true here so we want to make sure that it's set false here all right and now the next thing because right now as it is when you press f4 it's going to create the panel that's fine and everything now we need a method to actually make it to where when you press f4 again it'll hide the panel all right so we'll say main menu and we'll do a check is main menu visible so and we're going to have an else and end right here so we'll say main menu whoops caps lock came on by accident main menu set visible and we're going to put false here so if it is visible then hide it and set it false otherwise if it's not or if it um if it, yes it's not visible then we want it to be visible okay so right here just to recap so we created the panel right here we added it so that the user can download it right here. And then we set it up to where when you press F4 and you press, uh, if the menu does not exist, it'll create it. If it's visible, it'll hide it. And if it's invisible, it will it will um, bring it back or make it visible. So let's go in game and see what happens then. All right, so I am now getting in game. And there is a quick Lua error to address. Uh, it says that uh, there is an unexpected symbol near the equal sign here. And that is because we need to close out this function. Like, see, this function is closed out by this end. However, there needs to be another end. And actually, let's tap all this so that becomes more apparent. So there you go. That will fix that. And now I'm going to press the F4 menu. And as you can see, when I press F4, everything works and it closes just fine. Now, this is the make pop-up method, remember? So I can't move my character around right now while the menu's open. And I have to close it like this. So if we're going to do the other method, which is to use it to where you don't use a make pop-up, well, what you could do in order to enable the mouse is there's a really interesting command called GUI. So I put it right here, GUI, enable screen clicker. And we'll set that to false. And when true, we'll say GUI, enable screen clicker. So we'll say true. So when the menu is getting turned off, the screen clicker will turn off. When it gets turned on, the screen clicker will go on. So now I'm going to save that. And we commented this one out, or I can delete it. Pretty much does the same thing. And let's go. And I press. I'm actually going to have to reload the game really quick. One second. All right, so now I'll restart it again. And now I press the F4 menu. And notice that I can move around now, which is awesome. Uh, while the menu is open, my mouse is going around, and I can click on this button. However, there's something which we need to address here, is that when you do not disable the screen clicker with the button, um, it will keep the clicker on, and you won't be able to use your mouse to move around. So if I press F4 and then F4 again, now notice I can move my mouse around just like this. So remember, it's very important to disable the screen clicker. So again, I will go in here and I'll put enable screen clicker false, save that, and going to have to rejoin the server. So see you in one second. All right, so now I'm re in the server again and I'm going to press F4. And now I close it and everything works good. Now the last thing I want to show you has to do with buttons and that's how to make your button actually look nice and decent because you, you see this default button 
I mean, it's just an average looking button, nothing uh, so fancy about it. So we're going to close that. And I'm going to go into here. And what you can do is say function button colon paint. So we get the width and the height of the button. And remember to end a function. So now we're going to set some conditions here. So we're going to say, OK, if the button is down or it's being pressed, then button set color. And we'll say color, yeah, I'll give it a 150, 255, and 150. Okay. Else, this is the next condition if the button is hovered, so if the mouse is over the button, then we'll set the button its color like this, and we'll say color 200. 255 and 200 and that's going to light the button up a little bit more uh, notice the higher values right here and here are 200 instead of 150 so we're going to have a little highlight effect else buttons natural color when nothing's happening to it is going to be 255 255 255 so it's going to actually you know what um, we'll set it 100 100 100 be it's going to be dark, but it'll still look nice. Okay, so I'll go end right here. The function is end, and now we can go and get a restart one more time. All right, so I'm back in game. So let's take a look, and we go here. As you can see, the button is now different. So when I put my mouse over it, it lights up. And when I press it, see, it lights up even more. So we'll close. And there you go. Now you have a button for your VGI menu. And in the next tutorial, we're going to be continuing with different VGI elements. So I hope that you enjoyed this and learned a lot from it. Until then, I will see you next time.